Good morning, church family and friends. This is Friday, April 3rd. I want to thank you for your encouragement as we try new things and for your patience as we grow our communication with you. I'm sure that you have heard that our mayor has extended our shelter in place order through April 21st, and all factors point to this lasting longer. So we will not be meeting in our building for a while. Holy Week begins Sunday, and it saddens me that we're not going to be together. I'm going to miss seeing all our kiddos passing out the palms to the big people and shouting Hosanna, praising King Jesus with those crowds from the first Palm Sunday. I'm going to miss all of us beating together on uh, Good Friday and exploring together the great cost of our salvation and the weight of our sin and what Christ did for us. And I'm going to miss the joy of Easter Sunday, of celebrating his resurrection with all of you, of hugging and shaking hands and passing the peace. So in our short message today, we are going to look together at this new normal that we are in. We're going to explore a question. How do we turn our houses into church? How do we turn our houses into church? How can we encounter the Lord, learn, and yes, even grow in our discipleship during this unusual time? There are so many things we can't do as believers with regard to our faith, but what can we do? I want to remind you that the church began in homes. There were no buildings for almost 400 years. Now, granted, there was more than one family. Indeed, there were different types of people gathered together in these home churches. And Paul's letters were passed from house to house. So the early church began in homes. I want us all to envision right now that all of our homes are branches of El Calvario Presbyterian Church. Even if you live by yourself, your home is a branch of the church. I was reading a blog this week where the writer observed, every time the church is pushed down, it spreads out. Every time the church is pushed down, it spreads out. Think about that. The text we're going to look at today is very short. It's just one verse. It's Matthew 18, 20. I'll give you a minute to find your Bible. Find Matthew 18, 20. If you have kids in the house, you might want to get them next to you. Let them look up Matthew 18, 20. Teach them how to find it. Here's what Jesus says. He says, For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for these words. We had no idea what they would mean uh, in April of 2020. But Lord, we thank you that where two or three are together in our homes, you are there. And we pray that you would help us as we adjust and we make our homes into church. Amen. You know, I've been a small church pastor my entire ministry career. And over the years, there's been some low Sundays. I know at our church, if we have 15 or 20 people, we'll kind of look at each other and go, okay, it's a low day, all right? But God said where two or three are gathered, he's there. A couple of weeks ago, the elders and I were talking about some creative ideas for our Good Friday service. Our church has been great about offering creative Good Friday options through the years. So we were saying, maybe we'll meet outside in the back parking lot. Maybe we'll have a movie and a discussion and some prayer time afterwards. Or maybe this year we'll just do a traditional service. How can we be creative? Little did we know, we're going to have to be really creative this year on Good Friday. We're going to be sheltering in place to stem the tide of the coronavirus. It has thrust us into situations as the church where all across the world, family groups of two or three or a few more, That's church right now. That is the church gathered right now. Multiple living rooms and dens becoming sanctuaries. Worship in our living room has become the new normal for the foreseeable future. So how can we make it as meaningful as possible under the circumstance? I've got three suggestions for us today. You might want to get a pen and something to write with. Three things. The first one is, Acknowledge the weird. 
The second one is remember the verse. And the third one is get active. First, let's acknowledge the weird and the sad. The first Sunday I tried to worship online, it felt strange, I'll be honest with you. In my pajamas, no makeup, with technology, which is not my favorite, as anyone who knows me knows. It was hard to focus at times, although I do love the music. Your temptation, as you start to try to join worship online, you might be tempted to say, this is weird, I'm not going to do it. I want to encourage you not to do that. Push through the weird. You can pray. You can say, Lord, this is weird, but I want to worship you. Please help me. Set my heart free, Lord. In his book about finding your life's calling, author Parker Palmer shared a saying he learned as a young man that helped him push through and even triumph during difficult times. The saying goes like this. If you can't get out of it, get into it. I'll say it again. If you can't get out of it, get into it. We want to stop the spread of this virus and protect our health workers and our older people as much as possible. So we can't get out of this right now, but we can get into it. We can worship online. We can pray over the phone with someone. We can learn new technology and just acknowledge that it's weird and hard, but we do it anyway so that we can stay connected with the Lord, with our brothers and sisters in faith, with other believers. Our choice is also we could do nothing and we could decline spiritually and emotionally. We could miss opportunities for growth and blessing that the Lord has for each of us in the middle of this weirdness. So the first thing is acknowledge the weird. If you can't get out of it, get into it. Second, go back to the verse we're looking at today. Jesus was speaking these words and he said, where two or three come together in my name. Make sure you do that on Sundays, especially. Kids too, Gather your family together to watch one of our eco churches online. Go to our Facebook page where we have links to a few of our eco churches in English and Spanish. Um, If you're a part of the church, you should be getting text messages with these links in them. But turn off everything else in the house. If your kids have their gizmos on, turn them off. Gather everyone and worship together as a family online. Set apart the time. I want to invite you to prepare your hearts before you turn on your TV and computer. Prepare your hearts and your thoughts with a bit of quiet. Find yourself anticipating this time. Tell your family, worship's about to start. Maybe even bring your Bible with you as you sit on the couch. I've been having my journal open before the service starts with a pen so that I can write down phrases or ideas that stand out to me. Or if the Lord begins to speak to me or impress something on my heart, it can just jot a few things down. Both Sundays, writing as I listen really helped me to digest the word as it is preached. And Pastor Tim's sermons from Colorado are fabulous. Just like we've been talking about with some of our young parents about training our kids to worship in the pew with us, we're going to have to train ourselves and our kiddos, how do we do church in our house in these new ways? If you have little people and the sermon is too challenging for them to follow, at least have them stand up with you and sing. You could even give them a scarf to wave during the praise time and let them go to the front of your living room and and praise along with the worship band on the TV. So the first thing, acknowledge the weird. Second thing, remember the verse. And third, participate, actively engage. The first week when I was trying to worship online, I was sitting on the couch in my usual sort of TV watching style. And you know, I felt like I was watching TV. I felt very passive. 
And we don't want to be passive. We don't want to be observers where we're going, oh, I don't like this song. Or we want to be engaged. Uh, so this Sunday, this last Sunday, I decided I wanted to really participate. I wanted to cue my body and my whole being that this was praise. This was worship. This is something we get to do because he has claimed us as his own. We belong to him. We were created to worship and to praise. So we put the service on our big screen TV, which was so much better than just a phone or a laptop. So you know what I did? I got up and I stood behind the couch in my sweatpants with no makeup on and I danced. I danced in the back of my living room as the worship team led us. I danced with my hands raised. Are you surprised? This is true confession today. But I'm saying this to encourage you that you can do this too. Will it feel strange? Yes, but it's a delight to the Lord. It, it's a pleasing offering to the Lord, even in your living room. I felt a little self-conscious, even though it was just my husband there. But you know what? I did it anyway. The Lord's presence began to fill the room and it began to fill me as well in a new way. His presence was sweet, but you know, I had to do my part to stand up, engage my body and my heart, move from a TV watcher, which is fine. It's fine to sit and relax and watch TV. But when we worship online, we're not doing that. We're active. We're engaged. After the service, my husband and I shared what touched us or challenged us. And I want to encourage you to do that with your family members. Ask open-ended questions. What stood out to you? What do you feel like the Lord was saying? Ask each other questions that include information, but mostly formation too. Not just did you learn something new about the Bible, but what was the Lord saying? What do you feel like the Lord is inviting you into? Ask those questions of one another. Now, let me say a word to those of you who are forced by this virus situation to be alone in your homes during worship. This is so hard and so challenging. I want you to know that you are not alone in the greater sense. When you tune in to worship online, you are connected in the spirit to your Colorado brothers and sisters or your Highland Park brothers and sisters or your Iglesia Presbyteriana Danellen brothers and sisters and your other El Calvario brothers and sisters. But it is challenging to be in the house by yourself. So one thing you might want to do is call someone else 15 minutes before the online worship starts. Call someone else from our church. Reach out to someone and say, hey, how are you? Are you about to watch? What are you going to be worshiping with today? And then share how you're doing. Check in with each other. Share prayer concerns. And then you might want to check in again with that person after the service is over. Call them back. Share what song touched you, how the Lord was working, where you've been encouraged. You know, First Pres Colorado Springs has a hashtag, and it's hashtag bring church home 1P. I want to encourage each of you to turn your houses into church as we bring church home ECPC. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Amen.